Hello and welcome to another episode of Coding Secrets. Today I'll be explaining how in Leander, which is the first game I ever had published, I managed to trick the Commodore Amiga into drawing sprites that filled the entire width of the screen. The Amiga had the ability to display up to 8 16 pixel wide sprites on screen at once. However, it was well known that you could use one of the Amiga's chips, called the Copper or Coprocessor, to reuse these sprites further down the screen. It was a simple trick, but allowed for more than 8 sprites on screen. I'll explain how it works briefly here as it leads on to the much more impressive effect I used in Leander. So, the copper chip was a fantastic processor that allowed you to execute a very limited set of instructions at very specific locations on screen as the raster beam on the TV reached that position. It could wait for any vertical line position and could wait for any horizontal position in multiples of 4 pixels. It could then execute an instruction. So, for this old Amiga demo I made before I made games, I could take a row of sprites like this, and then I could change the vertical positions of the sprites once they had been drawn on screen by using the copper chip to wait for this line, and then update all the sprite positions to be further down the screen, fooling the sprite hardware into drawing them again. You could repeat this as often as you want to get many more sprites down the screen. And then if you were careful with the algorithm, you could move them around as long as you never ended up with more than 8 on a line. So in this example, I have 80 moving sprites even though the hardware only supports 8. So, going back to Leander, I used this technique to allow me to use the sprites for the score and the main character and his weapons. Now, because I was using a special Amiga screen mode called Dual Playfield mode, I was limited to just 6 sprites on screen at once, as the other two were disabled or corrupted by this mode. This is why the coins counter isn't on the same line as the score and the lives. So once all the game information was drawn, I used the copper here to reposition the sprites and to change the graphics ready to draw the main character and his weapons. But where it gets really clever is that the entire mountain range in the background is also drawn using sprites, even though you can only really have six sprites on a line. It turns out that if you use every available copper chip cycle, you can chase a sprite down a horizontal line, continually updating its X position to have it redrawn continually. So in the case of the mountains, I use six sprites to draw them, and as soon as the raster beam reaches the end of the sprites, the copper chip repositions the horizontal position of the first sprite, and so it gets repeated. While that's being drawn, the copper repositions the second sprite, and so on across the whole line, and then for the next line, and so on for the whole mountain range. It then does something very similar to draw the power bar at the bottom. So, everything you see on screen at the moment is drawn just using six multiplex sprites and the copper chip. Now, getting the mountains to scroll ended up being an issue due to the copper chip only being accurate down to 4 pixel increments horizontally, but I solved it by having 16 frames of animation to give the illusion of scrolling the mountains from left to right. And you can see in this level of the game that the cogs in the background don't scroll as I use those animation frames to spin the cogs instead. Now, technically you could do this for the entire screen and add a whole new 3 colour playfield to the display, and the last demo I made on the Commodore Amiga before I made games actually did this in Amiga HAM mode. HAM, or Hold and Modify, was a special mode for drawing images with up to 4096 colours, but you couldn't do anything else much with it, but by multiplexing sprites I added a scrolling background. Unfortunately, I lost the demo and have never been able to find it, and I don't know if it was ever copied or spread around by others. So, if you happen to find an Amiga demo by a group called Stress with this effect, please let me know. Now, one of the downsides of using this technique is that whenever the copper is used, it steals processor cycles from the other chips, which means you have less time to do other essential things in the game. So, as with most things, it's a balance. This is why I didn't make the mountain range any bigger. As a side note, I told the guys who made the Shadow of the Beast games on the Amiga about this technique, and they used it on Shadow of the Beast 3. In fact, we teased them about it in the Leander intro, as you can see here. Anyway, that's how the multiplex sprites in Leander were achieved. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.